the Pentagon issued a warning to China three days ago before President Xi's peace proposals when they didn't know what was in the peace proposals there will be consequences for China should it decide to deepen its relations with Russia. Think of the arrogance, first of all, of that. We'll come to the stupidity. But think of the arrogance of one superpower threatening a second superpower with consequences were it to decide to have more friendly relations with a third party. The sense of exceptionalism you must feel to think you're entitled to do that. To think you're entitled to warn other countries who they can be friends with. But let's turn to the stupidity of it. You know, from Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger onwards, it was the policy of the United States to keep Russia as Russia and China as far apart as it was possible to keep them and if possible to keep them at each other's throats. In the last few years the policy of the United States and NATO has made Russia and China virtually one country certainly militarily and economically one country and now they think China is going to obey orders from somebody called Antony Blinken. The days when China could be ordered around by foreigners is over, 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 over. <laughs> Ditto South Africa. South Africa was warned, why are you having joint naval exercises with the Russian and Chinese navies? As the leadership in South Africa pointed out, when you Western colonialist countries were supporting the apartheid dictatorship in South Africa, the only countries that stood with us were Russia and China. And you want us to come consider them our enemies? I'm so old I was there. Every dinner that the African National Congress fighters ate in the bush came from Russia. Every uniform they had, every gun that they carried, every international initiative, campaign that they were able to mount to bring about the freedom of South Africa came from the then Soviet Union and from China. And now you want South Africa? to be an enemy of Russia and China? Are you crazy? And South Africa has said no. India has said no. Iran has said no. Latin America from north to south has said no. Asia has said no. The Arab worlds, even the Saudis and the kings and the sheikhs in the desert have said no. The world is not against Russia and China. Don't imagine you speak for the world, the West, if you include it in it. countries that are very definitely not in the West. The last time I looked at the globe, Australia is not in the West. New Zealand is not in the West. But even if you allow them to call themselves the West, it's 13% of the people of the world, one, three. 13% of the world's population lives in what could loosely be described as the West. And we are here to say, even in the West, there are millions and millions and millions of us who reject your domination and your wars and your clubs. 